Hi, everybody. So I got a great email from someone in South Africa, and this is for Rue. So what I want to talk about today is the humanitarian projects. And also, I want to talk a little bit about how to unblock money stuff. So like, if you feel like you've been blocked with money. A lot of us have been blocked with money in the past. And I think most of that has been for protection. So not to get right out there into the world, being seen as a star seed and becoming a target. Okay. But it is time to let that go now. So when you're thinking about money, start to ask yourself, where is this coming from? Why do I not feel like I can have money? One thing that enlightened beings tend to think is that money is dirty. Money is from the dark side. And we're, we need to take ourselves back and kind of look at it from zero point. So look at it from the point of the observer and realize that money is just energy. So do you deserve energy? Yes, you absolutely do. So remember that when you're thinking about money, there's no desperation when it comes to money. There's just a yes, I will accept this money because it's not coming from a person who is dirty or created it to be dirty if it's coming to you. It's coming to you because it's a means to do what you wish and the universe will bring it to you. So don't look at the person who gave it to you or the person who paid for a service. You know, maybe you did something for them, um, a Reiki healing or whatever. But look at it as it's energy coming from to you from the universe and start to write things down. Write things down about how you feel about money and don't read it again. Just write it down and then make a pile somewhere safe and burn them. Okay. So if you have a stove, like a wood stove, burn them in the wood stove. If you have a fire pit, burn them in the fire pit. Make a ceremony out of it and release it. Write it down, crumble it up, and then make a pile to be released later. So I would definitely do that. And I got that from somebody else, that idea. It's a very old idea, but I was reminded of it recently. So thank you. I think you know who you are who reminded me of it. And that's an easy way to do that, to release subconscious stuff, okay? And then um, as far as humanitarian projects go, I do think that it's going to be tremendous for food and new kinds of housing or organizing the housing that's already available, People who have had a hard time and are kind of like down and out, they will be taken care of first, making sure they have food, shelter, and then things are going to move forward after that. Once the basics are taken care of, um, it's going to be stuff like art, learning how to be self-sustainable, and healing. So those are also going to be humanitarian projects. But if you can think about like creating a food forest as part of your humanitarian project, pre creating a half a mile's worth of greenhouses that are going to grow all kinds of food from all over the place, 
that's a great project. Anything that can be local is great. Helping small businesses is a great project. Um, there's so many things that you can do to help others. So start thinking about what is there, what is there that I'm interested in and that I would be willing to actually participate in, at least in the beginning, and to check in on as a project. Because you're not going to be doing it all on your own. Part of those projects is also to hire other people so that they can have um, income and be helping others as well. But just to do the simple things at first is going to be, I think, probably the first six months. And then it'll move into more complicated or more fun things. But, I mean, food is really fun. But <laughs> as far as some of the other things like the art and the... Um, the self-sustainability and all those kind of things, I think they're going to come just a little bit later than making sure that everybody is safe and warm and fed. So once those things are taken care of, then all those other humanitarian projects are going to start. And they could be cleaning up the ocean. They could be planting trees. They could be mitigating the forests because they're not well managed, you know, like taking out all the dead trees. It could be all kinds of different things. So think about what your passion is and kind of go from there. And a lot of them are also going to be for the young ones. Uh, I think that schools are going to change dramatically. So that's another thing to think about. And I think that kids that are actually college age, I think that what's going to happen is they're going to volunteer for a little while. And then they're going to be able to figure out where they fit in, in this new paradigm that's being created. And then they'll kind of choose what they want to learn. And they may learn it with a mentor instead of at a college. So it just depends. And I think we kind of have to let go of a lot of the structure ideas that we've had in the past. Because I don't really see that there's going to be tremendous structure in the future. Because we won't need it because we're going to be enlightened. <laughs>